I want you to hit me as hard as you can. If you know anything about Hollywood, just about anything can be turned into a movie. Transformers began as a toy line before eventually transitioning into an orgy of live action robot violence with Michael Bay, the director of all things that go boom, leading the charge. G.I. Joe also wasn't immune, and it just goes to show that you don't necessarily need a deep-rooted backstory to kick off a franchise. Some of these adaptations, while misguided, at least make sense. There's a DNA there for a competent motion picture. Given the success that Paramount Pictures had with Transformers, Universal went seeking for their own property to turn into their own franchise, and they dug deep into the world of a board game that began as a pencil and paper game which dates back to World War I. That's right, they chose to adapt Battleship, a strategy type guessing game for two players that gained significant popularity in 1967, when Milton Bradley turned it into the plastic board game most of us know and love. Battleship has spawned electronic versions, video games, and smart device apps, so why not a major motion picture? The problem is that there is no fundamental backstory behind the game, and so Universal and the creative team behind the film adaptation had to spice things up a bit by adding an extraterrestrial twist. They also decided to pump $200 million into a movie that wasn't an established intellectual property with the hopes that casting the likes of Tim Riggins from Friday Night Lights and pop star Rihanna would equal a box office bonanza. That was not to be the case, as Battleship turned into a pretty substantial financial bomb and a critical misfire. So what went wrong? The film went through a troubled pre-production which should have been the first signs that this was going to be a misguided mistake. But let's dive into this further. Let's put our pegs on the board, decide why this Battleship sank, and figure out what the f happened to this movie. Battleship is directed by Peter Berg and features a pretty stacked cast that includes Alexander Skarsgård, Taylor Kitsch, Brooklyn Decker, Rihanna, Tabanobu Osano, Jesse Plemons, and Liam Neeson. In the film, the crews of a small group of warships have to battle against an extraterrestrial naval fleet that has plans of stealing the Earth's resources. So, you know, nothing like the board game that inspired it at all. In fact, the only real connection with the game is the name, and a sequence inspired by how one plays the game in real life. No one even says, you sunk my battleship. You have Liam Neeson in your movie and you don't get him to say, you sunk my battleship? This might be a tad dramatic, but this is probably one of the most missed opportunities in cinematic history. Battleship was greenlit following the success of the first two Transformers movies, which grossed $709 million and $836 million worldwide. Whenever a certain genre of filmmaking becomes successful at the box office, the major studios want their own piece of the pie. Paramount had both Transformers and G.I. Joe in their arsenal, so Universal decided to reach into the exciting world of board games. Not only did Universal decide that Battleship would be the ideal choice, but they were so confident in their decision that they provided the production with a $150 million budget. That's either a studio that feels invincible or one run by execs who are extremely out of touch. Major franchises get budgets on this scale, not one film that's hoping to one day be sequelized. It became clear early in pre-production that Battleship was already in trouble. There was just a lot of money on the table and an idea that seemed focused on the brand rather than a story that was a necessity to tell. At one point, Universal considered canceling the film altogether, which would have resulted in a $30 million loss for the studio. Adam Fogelson, a new chairman at Universal at the time, decided the studio would lose less money if they increased the budget of the film instead of outright canceling the project. So, the already ludicrous $150 million budget increased to an even more insane $200 million. If he had a crystal ball and could see its future box office returns, this film would have been canceled before the word go. Thanks for watching Joe Blow Videos. If you enjoy our shows, please like and subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when new videos go live. Now, back to the show! Universal had to think about how to minimize losses if there were to be some so they had to get a cast that would be arguably bankable enough to put butts in the seats. Jeremy Renner was initially considered for the role of Alex Hopper, but by April 2010, Taylor Kitsch had been cast in the role. 
Kitsch was one of those hot up and coming actors that became a household name playing Tim Riggins on the critically acclaimed series Friday Night Lights. Director Peter Berg, who actually directed the film version of Friday Night Lights, also developed the series, so he was familiar with Kitsch, which made his casting a relatively easy choice. Alexander Skarsgård was chosen to play his brother Stonehopper, while model-turned-actress Brooklyn Decker was cast as Hopper's fiance Samantha Shane, because all these films need a hot model with just the right amount of acting talent. Liam Neeson would take on the role of Samantha's father and Hopper's superior officer, Admiral Terrence Shane. Perhaps the most interesting casting choice was pop star Rihanna, who was making her acting debut in the film as Cora Rakes. During an interview with GQ, Berg spoke about her casting and said he decided she could act after seeing her appearance on Saturday Night Live. Rihanna ultimately accepted the part because she wanted to, quote, do something badass, and also because it wasn't a role that was too big for her to play. Perhaps that was code for, if it fails, it's not her fault. Other interesting casting choices is a pre-Bohemian Rhapsody Rami Malek as Lieutenant Hill, and Jesse Plemons as Jimmy Ordy Ord. The casting of Plemons proved to be a Friday Night Lights reunion with Kitsch, as he played Landry Clark on the series. Berg said he wrote the whole part for Plemons because he knew how comfortable he and Kitsch were working together. Berg said, quote, I know that he's really good for Taylor, and he makes Taylor better. So I wrote that whole part for Jesse. I never thought of it as a Friday Night Lights reunion. I thought of it as a protection, bringing a trusted family member in. Berg also went for more authenticity by using U.S. Navy sailors as extras in various parts of the film. Filming on Battleship took place in the United States on the Hawaiian islands of Maui and Oahu. Originally, filming was going to take place in Australia's Gold Coast in 2010, but changed locations due to a lack of Australian government tax incentives. The apartment scenes were shot in Sherman Oaks, California, while various driving scenes along with a shootout were played out in Playa del Rey, California. If there was any reason to do this movie, it would be to get paid to go to Hawaii and shoot in sunny Southern California. Additional filming took place on USS Missouri, while real-life guided missile destroyers USS John Paul Jones and USS Sampson, which were active members of the US Navy Pacific Fleet, were also used. Sailors from various commands in Navy Region Hawaii assisted with line handling to take Missouri in and out of port for a day of shooting in mid-2010, which indicates the scale this movie was trying to achieve. Also, in an attempt to keep this film about extraterrestrial battleships accurate, the Science and Entertainment Exchange provided science consultation for the film, just in case they got dragged for not getting this right. In a movie, inspired by a board game, featuring extraterrestrial battleships. Battleship was originally set to be released in 2011, but was shifted to May 18th, 2012. Not really a bad slot. That's an early summer release at the box office, and it's over a week before Memorial Day weekend, so there were some potential box office bumps that could have taken place if success was in its future. The movie had a lavish world premiere in Tokyo on April 3rd, 2012, with director Peter Berg and stars Taylor Kitsch, Brooklyn Decker, Alexander Skarsgård, and Rihanna all in attendance. At the time, there really weren't any signs that the film was headed towards financial failure, but then opening weekend happened. Battleship grossed $8.8 .8 million on its opening day, which is not the result you want from a film that cost $200 million to make. By the end of the weekend, the film debuted to $25.5 million, finishing in second place behind Marvel's The Avengers, which grossed $56 million in its third weekend. Alright, in retrospect, the May release for Battleship may not have been a good idea, since the Avengers debuted the first weekend of May to a then record opening of $207.4 million. To be fair, I'm not sure the industry saw coming just how successful the Avengers would be, but it's certainly a movie that helped sink Battleship. By the end of its run, Battleship grossed a dismal $65.4 million at the domestic box office. And despite grossing $303 million globally, The Hollywood Reporter stated at the time that the film was destined to lose $150 million for the studio. And that's how you sink a battleship. Reviews for Battleship also didn't do it any favors. The film secured a rotten score of 34% on Rotten Tomatoes, with a consensus that reads, quote, It may offer energetic escapism for less demanding filmgoers, but Battleship is too loud, poorly written, and formulaic to justify its expense, and a lot less fun than its source material. 
A lot of the reviews at the time focused on the based on a board game concept that seemed to be driving the film. The Australian Broadcasting Corporation's Radio National said that the setup is, quote, either sheer joy or pure hell, depending on how seriously you take it. Empire Magazine took notice of one sequence that tried to copy the board game by saying, quote, had to admire the film's creators jumping through hoops to engineer a sequence that replicates a board game. Other reviews compared it to Michael Bay's Transformers with what seemed like backhanded compliments or downright insults. The Sydney Morning Herald said the movie, quote, finds the same balance between action-packed imagination and not taking the premise seriously that made Michael Bay's Transformers such a joyride. See, that's a compliment. Just turn your brain off, don't take it seriously, and you'll be fine. Peter Travers of Rolling Stone in his one-star review said, quote, Battleship is all noise and crashing metal, sinking to the shallows of Michael Bay's Armageddon, and then digging to the brain extinction level of the Transformers trilogy. Now, that's a downright insult, but life is all about balance. Not all the reviews were incredibly bad. Roger Ebert gave the film a mix 2.5 stars out of 4, and he praised the film's climax as, quote, an honest-to-God third act, instead of just settling for non-stop fireballs and explosion, as Bay likes to do. I don't want to spoil it for you. Let's just say the greatest generation still has the right stuff and leave it at that. Stephen James Snyder of Time Magazine called it, quote, an unlikely mix of Independence Day, Pearl Harbor, Jurassic Park, and The Hunt for Red October. Three out of those four movies are pretty good, so let's call that a win as well. Following the film's release, Battleship did receive some awards attention. Rihanna won Choice Movie Breakout at the Teen Choice Awards, but she also won Worst Supporting Actress at the Razzies. Rihanna scored the only, quote, win for the film at the Razzie Awards, although it was also nominated for Worst Picture, Worst Director, Worst Supporting Actor, Liam Neeson, Worst Supporting Actress, Brooklyn Decker, Worst Screenplay, and Worst Screen Ensemble. Much like how the board game inspired the film, the movie also inspired a change in the board game itself. Hasbro released several new editions of Battleship, including an update to the regular Fleet vs. Fleet game and a movie edition, featuring the alien vessels in the film and a card-based play mode as well. A video game based on the movie was also released on May 15, 2012, to coincide with the film's international release. The game was released on PlayStation 3, Wii, Xbox, Nintendo 3DS, and Nintendo DS. Looking at exactly what happened to Battleship, it seems like the main culprit was putting too much money into a very slim idea. Yes, Hollywood tries to turn anything into a film, and I'm sure we're not long away before Connect 4 or Hungry Hungry Hippos gets the movie treatment. But just because you can, doesn't mean you should. However, if Hollywood execs still feel the need to make these things happen, maybe don't throw $200 million into an unproven idea. Just a thought.